Good morning, little friends. Are you having an amazing Sunday? We are off and we are ready. We are on week five of our series, On the Go with God. And we have gone on so many adventures and we have learned so much along the way. But you know what we can never forget? To wish our friends some happy birthday. So this week, there's a whole bunch of you having birthdays, which is amazing because we've got some great spring, summer weather outside. So I hope you get out and you get to have cake and ice cream and balloons and presents and maybe hang out with some family and friends that you love so much. So if I missed your birthday, make sure that your parents send me an email right after Children's Church today because we never want to miss your birthday. But I hope that it's awesome and amazing. So are you ready? Here we go. So we are on the go with God. And we've been doing this for five weeks this week. We have been all over the place and we have learned a whole lot. Are you ready? Our first one, who remembers it? It was, uh, do you remember it? My God is Lord. And week two, we learned that God is my shepherd. Week three, we learned, who remembers it? God is my father. And then last week, do you remember what we learned? There might have been some band-aids involved. It was God is my healer, right? All right, so this week we got another one. I bet you haven't heard this one yet. God is my defender. Hmm, that one sounds kind of weird, huh? But you know what's amazing about it? God is our defender. He will fight for us. He's always got our back, and it's pretty amazing. So we have two stories this week. If you're in elementary school, you're going to learn all about Elijah, and if you're in preschool, you're going to get to go hang out with Daniel and some lions. How do you feel about lions? Because Daniel didn't think they were pretty cool, but you might change your mind. I don't know. Could go multiple ways, but we are off and we are going to have so, so much fun. So are you ready? You got your dancing shoes on? You got your game face on? Are you ready? We are on the go with God. Let's go. Hello world travelers and welcome to GOQ, an app like no other. I'm one of your hosts, Chase. And my name is Sunny. We've been trotting the globe together for some time now. That's what led us to develop GOQ. Yep, since we launched the GOQ app, our global quest has gone to a whole new level. It's so cool. GOQ gives us the green light to travel and it drops us in a completely new and exciting location. Then you get to help us figure out where we are. Because we never know where we're going until we get there. Once we land, you'll play a game to figure out our location and then hunt for a souvenir. And I love souvenirs because it's like you get to take a little piece of somewhere with you. That's right, and each time you help us find a souvenir, it unlocks a clue about our next quest. Now, before we jump right into all that our GeoQ app has to offer, we need to fill you in on some of our greatest travel hacks. And in case you don't know what a travel hack is, it's a helpful tip or trick that can help you when you're on the go. All right, to find out today's travel hack, it's time to play a game. And this one is called, What's in the Suitcase? You'll see a suitcase with the top five items that people forget on a trip, but you'll only be able to see their shadows. Guess what they are before the timer runs out to hear today's travel hack. You guys did awesome. Today's travel hack is to remember your walking shoes. Yeah, because if you're not careful, you might find yourself with all kinds of blisters on your feet. Man, I've been there and there's nothing worse than wanting to bike on over to a windmill and losing your flip flop along the way. Or it could turn out for the good because you could end up purchasing your new favorite pair of shoes from the gift shop. You really are proud of those Mickey Mouse shoes. Oh boy, am I ever. Now, here's one travel hack that will never let you down. You've got to make sure you have some tunes queued up to help the time go by. And I've got one fired up and ready to kick us off. Everyone stand up and let's sing this together. My shepherd, my healer, my 
Me too. Let's see where GOQ takes us today. Grab your suitcase, my friend. It's time to go. Really awesome. It doesn't look like anywhere we've landed before. You're right about that. It's beautiful though. Seriously, let's play a game and see if our travel buddies can figure out where we are today. Let's play sheep, panda, dog. You'll have five seconds to choose which animal you want to be. You can either be a sheep like they have in New Zealand, a panda from China, or a dog like you'd find in Mexico. If your animal disappears from the screen, that means we're not traveling to that country today. And you'll sit down. If you're ready to play, stand up and get ready because here we go. Sit down if you chose sheep. Sit down if you chose dog. Panda wins. Today you've landed in China. Location confirmed. Yes, we're in China. Good job, GeoQuesters. I've never seen so much bamboo in my <laughs> life. I can't wait to find out more about this place. Ni hao! That's basically the Chinese way of saying, what's up, GeoQuesters? I'm Juan Duran, the guide for all your global quests. And today, you found yourself in the land of the panda bear, the great country of China. Speaking of pandas, Bamboo makes up about 99% of their diet. That's basically breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, can I take your order? Hmm, I'll have your number one bamboo meal with extra bamboo on the side, and I'll take a bamboo shake as well. And while the pandas are getting their grub on, the locals will be over here eating sticky rice with their chopsticks made from the rest of the bamboo. Over 50 billion pairs of chopsticks are made each year. That is a lot of chopping. Too bad I don't have any chopsticks handy. I sure could go for some fried rice. Rice is a big part of life here in China, and it's not just a delicious side dish. Little known fact, it's also been holding China's greatest defense together for hundreds of years. The one and only Great Wall of China. But back to food. Rice isn't the only thing they treasure here in the world's most populated country. Among other food delicacies are seaweed and even frogs. Mm, I think I'll stick to rice right now. Oh, let's not forget about sports here in China. 
They may have won 28 Olympic gold medals in table tennis, but that's not even their main sport played on the reg. Other sports include martial arts, such as karate, dragon boat racing, and of course, soccer. Doesn't it seem like all the countries play soccer? Now that you know where you are, it's time you find your souvenir. You can find it at coordinates 40 degrees north, south, east, west, 25 divided by triangle, that's where you'll find it. Did you catch any of that? If not, don't worry, I've loaded them into GeoQ. And never fear, the clue giver is here. Wand around is coming in hot. Here's what you're looking for. The average weight of one is about 300 pounds, but yours only weighs about three. It's holding its favorite snack, and it's the color of newspaper. Come back once you've found the souvenir. Good luck, questers. One time I bought this really cool cup from Germany. It was full of yummy chocolates. I ate them all on the plane ride home and immediately missed being in Germany. But you still had your cup, and that's one of the reasons why we created souvenir badges here in GeoQ, to give you something to always remember the awesome places you've been. They also don't disappear and give you stomach aches. And when you find them, they unlock our next quest. All right, keep your eyes on the screen and listen out for us to give you the clues to find this week's souvenir. First up, clue number one, it usually weighs about 300 pounds, but ours will only weigh about three. Wow, it must be on a pretty strict diet. Well, speaking of, clue number two is that it will be holding its favorite snack. Well, there are plenty of yummy things to snack on here in China. Yeah, and the third clue says that it's the color of newspaper. Okay, you have a few more seconds to find it if you haven't already. Yell out what you think it is. It was a stuffed panda. Great work, GOQ users. That was a tough one. Now that you found today's souvenir, Let's see what Juan's got to say. P-A-N-D-A -A bear, panda bear, panda bear, panda bear. You found the panda bear. Great job, questers. There was no bamboozling you, and now you have your very own bamboo bear to take home with you. Look, it's even holding its favorite snack. You know, bamboo isn't just a tasty treat for pandas. It also makes a great place to live, which is a little crazy because they're basically eating their houses. <laughs> Pandas are able to hide in the shadows of bamboo forests and be practically camouflaged. It can also be used to defend them from harmful predators. Now, I know what you're thinking. Pandas with bamboo lightsabers? <laughs> Not exactly. The bamboo is more like a wall to defend them. It's like their very own edible Great Wall of China. We all need a little protection from time to time, but do you know who always has our back and is the greatest defender of all? God. In the Bible, there's a story about two kings who were at war. There was a really bad dude, the king of Aram, and a really good dude, the king of Israel. The king of Aram was pretty bad to the bone, and he would make all kinds of plans to attack God's people, the Israelites. But what he didn't know was that there was a prophet named Elisha who was getting the inside scoop from God. Not like text messages with all the memes and emojis, but he was legit hearing God speak directly to him, telling him the exact moves the king of Aram was planning. You better believe Elisha did not keep those messages to himself though. He went straight to the king of Israel to tell him what's up. This happened a bunch of times and it made the king of Aram so mad. For example, if King Aram's army went north, the Israelite army knew and went south. If they ordered chicken, God's people ordered burgers. Okay, well, maybe not that last part, but it was like the Israelites could read his mind. But how? The bad king sent for his army guys and demanded they fess up and tell who was destroying their plans. One of them spoke up and told them about Elisha who was telling the king of Israel everything that was going on. This was not okay with the king, so he devised a plan to get rid of Elisha once and for all. That night, the bad king sent horses and chariots and a strong army to surround the city where Elisha was staying. Early in the morning, Elisha's servant went outside and saw the army everywhere he looked. Soldiers were surrounding them and the city. Elisha's servant began to freak out and he ran to Elisha asking what they should do. And you know what Elisha did? Do ya? Do ya, do ya, do ya? Get this, he prayed. 
And wouldn't you know it, the servant's eyes were open to see that they were surrounded by another army, God's army, with horses and chariots made of fire. And you know who came through to defend them? That's right, the big G-O-D, God. And that's not all God did. He made the enemy army blind. They couldn't see anything anymore. Lights out. The army was so confused that they went up to Elisha to ask him where they could find Elisha. He was able to trick them though, and he led them straight toward the Israel army. And when they got there, Elisha prayed to God to open their eyes. They were so confused when they realized where they ended up. And you would think that they were in big trouble, but no. Elisha told the king of Israel to whip up something special for the enemy army to eat, like the most epic feast ever. But for the bad guys? Yup. So that's what they did. And after their bellies were stuffed, the king sent them on their way. And surprise, 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 the king of Aram and his army didn't bother God's people for a long time. God had defended them once again. You may not realize it, but God defends you too. He has so many names, and Defender is a powerful one that can give you courage no matter what you're facing. We may not be able to see God or his angels, but they're real and they're always around. There is nothing we need to fear because God is our Defender. Well, that's all I got today for my pro questionators. China's been fun, but it's time to catch that Panda Express on out of here. See you next time. That's really cool. When we're looking back on our time in China, we'll always have this stuffed panda badge to remind us that God is leading us, protecting us, and giving us everything we could ever need. This little guy is the perfect reminder that God is our defender. And we can always count on him to go before us and protect us in everything we do. Come on, fellow questers, say this after me. God is? God is? My defender. My defender. That's exactly right. And earning this week's souvenir badge unlocks a clue about our next quest. Your next adventure will take you to the birthplace of popcorn and chocolate. Yes, I was starting to get hungry. <laughs> you and your snacks. In the meantime, want to sing another one of our travel songs? Yeah, let's stand up and sing together.
I hope you've had as much fun in our app as we have. That's all the time we have to play today, so let's all bow our heads, close our eyes, and pray together. Hey God, thank you for showing us more about who you are. We're so thankful that you are our defender. Thank you for loving us, protecting us, and going before us in everything we do. Help us to remember that we can trust you in all circumstances. We love you. Amen. See you all next week.